Mr Limbrick. Thank you, President. Uh, my question is for the Minister for Small Business. The Premier recently announced that all authorised workers will be required to be vaccinated, although as of this morning no mandatory vaccination directions were published on the Department of Health website. This announcement has sent many employers and workers into a panic. They are unsure what to do if, a staff, if staff either refuse to be vaccinated or refuse to hand over their medical details. Many of these workers are highly valued staff that the employer does not want to sack. What are you advising employers to do if staff refuse to either be vaccinated or hand over their private medical details? Um, thank you, President. I thank Mr Limbrick for his question. And I know that he has an audience um, and attracts an audience that are vehemently opposed Small. to the scientific Small. basis of the vaccination Small. program that is the thing between us and an open economy. And I think that, you're I th I th you know, and, and, and I think that, that, you know, you're, I would encourage you to reflect on how people interpret your appearance at public you, events Minister, like the riots Minister, at the union you. office thank a you. couple of weeks ago. Minister, thank you. Mr David on a point of order. Minister Stitt accused Mr Limbrick of being a right-wing extremist. That's how I heard what she so said. Now, I don't know whether he heard it, uh, but uh, that, that, is, that is what I heard, and, and I, I don't think it's right. Look, oh, order, order, order. Mr David, Mr David, I know I heard you clearly, but... Mr. Limbrick is in a chamber, and I didn't hear anything. I don't know if Mr. Limbrick, he didn't raise a point of order. I don't know if he heard it or heard nothing. But I, all right, we'll let, thank you. Minister, to continue. Look, thank you. Look, I, I know these, these are issues about which people in the community have strong feelings. The need for us to open up, the need for us to open up in a um, considered and thoughtful way that is cognizant of our obligations to ensure that people in the Victorian community who need help from our hospitals and our health services can access it while we open up. And I know that half the people in this room and half the people in the community reckon the roadmap's too slow and the other half reckon it's too fast, which maybe makes it about the right pace. Um, but uh, in... In response to Mr Limbrick's question about businesses that have staff members that do not want to be vaccinated, um, my answer is precisely the same answer I gave Mr Davis. I would encourage those businesses to talk to their staff about the importance of vaccination, the relationship to that business's ability to trade and participate in a, in a busier and more active economy. Uh, I would encourage those businesses to think about it's with, whether it's within their capacity to facilitate time off to go and be vaccinated. Um, and I would encourage them to reach out to their peak organisations for support and advice about the way in which these things um, uh, engage with industrial relations law. Um, as for um, organisations that have staff shortages and skills shortages, because this tiny percentage of the community would rather, would rather ignore science and uh, put themselves and their workmates at risk, that small percentage of our community, for employers that need to replace those people in their workplaces, I would encourage them to familiarise themselves with the supports that are available through the Jobs Victoria program that I administer in my employment portfolio, and we will do everything we can to assist them, also working with PEAKS, to find staff that are wanting to work. Yeah. 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 Mr Limbrick on a supplementary. Thank you, President. Um, Take this off. If an employer decides that they must reluctantly sack a staff member due to, due to a mandate, what protections are there for those employers in this situation against things such as unfair dismissal or other legal actions that may be taken against them? 
So. Thank you. Um, so this, uh, this, I would make the point that this is outside um, my area of training and portfolio responsibilities in a very direct sense because you're asking about Commonwealth uh, no. industrial relations laws. No, he asked about un unfair dismissal and Commonwealth industrial relations laws. So there are things I know about this, but I think in the, no, no, I mean, as we all do, I mean, you used to be, Thank you. you know, in industrial relations too, in your own way. Um, the, um, so, so, but, but my answer to the question is that these are very, very particular instances and in, 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 in um, a circumstance where an employer has to performance manage an employer, they need to seek appropriate advice from someone more qualified and trained to provide this to them than I am. Um, but again, I think the best thing they can do is have that conversation about the benefits of vaccination.